Welcome back. So we're talking about the Gabor transform and how you can use it to compute the spectrogram, which is a time frequency diagram uh, that you can use to decompose audio signals, not just into their, their power spectrum of what frequencies are active, but how that power spectrum evolves in time uh, to give kind of this rich evolving uh, audio signal. And in this lecture, I'm gonna show you how to code this up in Python and analyze a couple of interesting signals. Okay, good. Okay, excellent. So this is from chapter two of our book, Data-Driven Science and Engineering. Uh, and all of this Python code, these Jupyter notebooks, uh, were made by Daniel Deluski, modified from our MATLAB code. Uh, so thank you, Daniel. And this is the spectrogram code for a chirp signal, okay? So in Python, it's pretty simple to build uh, an audio signal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an audio signal with a delta T of 0 0.001, so one kilohertz sampling. We're going to define the time uh, from zero to two, so two seconds of audio. And I'm gonna have a, essentially an audio signal which is going to go from a low frequency 50 hertz tone to a high frequency 250 hertz tone in kind of a quadratic chirp path. Okay, that's what this, this function uh, here does, is that it evolves in time going from low frequency to high frequency. I'm going to play the sound here using this SD play um, code here, and you'll have to import sound device as SD for this. And then we're, just, we're going to plot the spectrogram. So the spectrogram is basically one line of Python code here where you show uh, kind of these different, um, these different arguments. It basically shows you kind of how wide do you want this Gabor window to be, what's the sampling rate of the original signal, and how much overlap in delta t's should each of these Gabor windows have. And there's fancier arguments, you know, to use different Gabor windows. For example, you can use um, this Gabor uh, window as a, as a Gaussian. You could use square windows and, and all kinds of other windows, and, and you can use those as arguments of the spectrogram. So check out the documentation if you want to get under the hood of how to do this. Um, this is just kind of a simple version. And once you generate that chirp, you can... Um, plot the spectrogram, and it looks like this. Okay, so I'm just actually gonna run this code. Okay, so the Python's not playing the sound nearly as nicely as MATLAB, but it went from low frequency to high frequency, boop, like that, so low frequency to high frequency. And you can see here, uh, so the x-axis is time, the y-axis is kind of the frequency, and the intensity tells you how much power is in each of those frequencies. So here you have kind of at 50 hertz at time zero, there's a lot of power in 50 hertz, and as time evolves, the power uh, shifts up to higher and higher frequencies, up to 250 hertz. So it goes from low frequency, boop, it's a high frequency. And so this is a nice way of visualizing kind of that audio signal as it evolves uh, in time, okay? So the next example I'm going to show you is pulling this Beethoven Sonata. Um, again, you can use uh, this librosa package to load the file. Um, and this is going to take a couple of seconds. So while it's loading, I'm going to show you uh, in the data book. Right, so this is the chirp example I just showed you. If you did not compute this time frequency diagram, but instead you computed the actual full Fourier transform of the whole audio signal all at once and computed the power spectrum, this is what you would get, okay? So here you see that there is a lot of power at 50 hertz, and then there's a lot of power in all of this band from 50 to, to 250, but it doesn't tell you kind of where in time these frequencies occur. And so I think it's kind of fun to take this and knock it over on its side down here, and you can actually see now that the power spectrum of the full audio signal is kind of the cumulative average of the spectrogram averaged over time. So if you take the spectrogram and average up every column, you get back the power spectrum of the full audio signal. So you can see that the reason most of the power is at 50 hertz is because this was a quadratic chirp. So it spent the most time here at 50 hertz. Most of the time was spent right here at 50 hertz and then less and less and less time at each of the subsequent frequencies. Okay, so that's why uh, you see this kind of peak at 50 hertz here. 
And this is neat. So what you can think of as the spectrogram is almost like an exploded view of the power spectrum of the full signal. So all of the frequency content is in the power spectrum. The spectrogram tells you where in time those frequencies occurred. Okay. Okay, so I think that my Beethoven has loaded, yes. And now I'm going to plot the spectrogram of the first million entries. So this is highly sampled, um, I think 24 kilohertz or something like that, maybe 44 kilohertz. So really, really high sampling rate. And so I'm gonna plot the first million data points, which I think is about 40, I guess 45 seconds of data here. And on the x-axis, we have time for up to about 45 seconds. On the y-axis, we have frequency up to about uh, 11 kilohertz. And again, the color, the intensity tells you how much power, how much audio power is in each of those frequencies at each instant in time. And so these really bright yellow peaks correspond to individual keys being played uh, in this progression in time as the, as the, the audio goes on. Okay, so I just love the spectrogram. I love how, uh, how much information there is, how, how much you can do with the spectrogram. You could take the spectrogram and you could take the SVD of it and you could see what is kind of the eigen chords that are being played in this sonata. I think that would be super interesting. I encourage you to do that. Um, see kind of what are, the, what are the chord structures by taking the SVD of this. You could use that for classification uh, and all kinds of other things. Okay, these are, are rich features of this audio signal that you wouldn't get if you just took the Fourier transform of the whole thing, okay? Um, and if you look at this uh, Lib Rosa, it doesn't only give you the signal Y, it also gives you the sampling rate. So the sampling rate is uh, 22,000 or 22 kilohertz. The size of this data is about, uh, what is this? This is about 26 million uh, entries. So that tells you that this is a really long song. This is like maybe eight minutes or something like that. Um, not sure I did that math right. Maybe it's more like, maybe it's more like 20 minutes. It's a long song. And I can play the first uh, 30,000 elements right here using this. Okay, that ran that. Let's run this. Okay, that was a little too short. Let me make it a little longer. You can see the different progressions. I'll make it a little longer still. And then while this is playing, I'll show you uh, a neat part of the book. Okay, so this is the first some seconds of this. And this is one of my favorite diagrams we made in the book, which is essentially taking the first two bars of this sonata up here, and then plotting uh, below the spectrogram uh, of the first, first 40 seconds of these first two bars, okay? And for example, you can take these, these boxed regions, these orange and blue boxed regions, and you can see what they look like in sheet music and what they look like in the spectrogram. So for example, here, this uh, progression down here, you can actually see it in the, in the spectrogram. And as zoom in, if you zoom into about the first kilohertz, the first uh, thousand hertz of this, of this signal, you can actually color code each key on the piano uh, in this kind of rainbow pattern here. So you can see the C, B, B, uh, B flat, and all, all, of these, um, all of these keys. And you can see, first of all, that this piano is in tune, so the, the, the kind of bright spots align with these keys, but you can also see the progression of what keys are being played at what point in time and the chords and so on and so forth, okay? Up here, you can actually see like harmonics and you know resonances and all kinds of interesting stuff. So if you go to the code, um, I think this is probably in my MATLAB version of the code, you can see how I generate these frequencies and, and kind of make the, these graphics and, and how you can dig into the spectrogram using the short time Fourier transform, okay? But the upshot here is that the spectrogram is an extremely rich and powerful tool for the analysis of evolving, uh, temporally evolving signals. So signals that are not strictly speaking periodic, but have periodic structure evolving in time. And you can break this down into this time frequency diagram, which has lots and lots of information. Okay, so I encourage you to play around with this. You know, pick your own favorite song or audio signal. See if you can classify, uh, you know, jazz versus rock versus uh, blues just based on, on features from the spectrogram. Okay, all right, thank you.